video I want to talk to you guys about combat accuracy and having your own standard as the title would suggest. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, a target that I used in a previous video uh, basically about <clears throat> uh, using steel and paper targets for training. And just to kind of talk about my standards as an example and why I have these standards. So. I mean, combat accuracy kind of speaks for itself, so if you're in combat, you want to make your hits count. And the obvious areas are like CNSs and uh, the CNS and uh, pretty much causing the other person to bleed out and extinguish. I mean, it is kind of clinical, but, you know, the point of deadly force is you're applying deadly force, right? You need to stop that threat because you have no other choice. So, anyways, I've shot this from about five to seven yards. It's kind of rough, but somewhere in between there. And... Uh, this is basically the size of the heart area, like the area that you want to hit on an average person. And I did shoot it from a static position, which is a little bit unrealistic for the most part. There usually is going to be some kind of movement involved, and that is one of the things I will test myself on is uh, is moving. Sorry, I'm, I got mosquitoes and stuff that are coming out, you know, early spring and stuff. But uh, So uh, basically using like an ammo box is a good a good way of uh, testing yourself and trying to go at speed and seeing how fast you can go ahead and put rounds on target now uh, typical gunfights are uh, basically going to be dictated in you know about two seconds or less uh, for the most part uh, at least close range uh, typically you'll get a reaction like a psychological reaction and if you uh, hit the right spots like a spine or something like that it could be even less but uh, since I don't really have too many, re I, I don't have uh, access to like reactionary targets that can actually detect a hit and then fall, I, I could get something that would basically, like a steel target behind something like this, that can make the target fall uh, after a certain amount of hits or whatever and just randomly gauge it. But I don't really have access to that kind of stuff right now, maybe in the future, but that would be a good trainer as well to kind of respond to your threat rather than just reacting with a standard dose of you know, freedom seeds, as it were. So, anyways, the important thing is to get your hits on target as fast as you can and as competently as you can. And I like to use paper for this because I'm not necessarily tracking exactly where my hits are going um, because the focus is going to be on the target itself um, because they're the threat and that's what your eyes are typically going to focus on. So you want to practice that accordingly. So for paper, this is the one of the best ways to test it and trying to keep your... Uh, uh, you know, basically the area that you're aiming at, you know, kind of slim. Keep yourself to a higher standard, uh, but the further you go out, obviously, you're going to know it's going to be harder to uh, get a lot of accuracy in, at, at speed. Now, some people would say speed is fine, but accuracy is finer, final or whatever. The problem is you got to be accurate. You got to be fast enough to matter. Yes, you got to be accurate in order to get your hits, but you still have to be fast enough to matter. So the goal is to get that fine medium and not accept anything less than your best. Now, the higher test on this one, so to speak, would be hitting in this area or even being able to clip these, uh, get all my shots in this area. That would be awesome if you could actually do that. And with some pistols, I'm actually capable of doing that. But with this Glock 23, uh, I'm not as good as something as with something like an M&P or something like that uh, just right off the bat uh, and jumping from gun to gun not really going to perform the best all the time but the more you work with something and the more you test yourself and actually work on your uh, your performance and your appropriate drills to the specific things that you're trying to work on the better you'll get and also uh, w working on the specific muscles that go with uh, having control is a big deal too so anyways let's go ahead and move on to steel targets as our next example as far as steel targets are concerned I like to stick with the silhouette target because it actually gives me a lot more uh, versatility I guess you could say as as far as like what I can do with it so I can concentrate on the head which is still kind of like the paper how it's you know pretty slim it's a small target area and it allows me to uh, kind of see where I'm printing my shots if as long as it's freshly painted of course but it allows me to test it and being able to do uh, headshots at um, at range actually can be a valuable skill now this isn't exactly accurate it's not like there's going to be a lot of no neck people so uh, some people would advocate for uh, having the higher half, if not a little bit higher, uh, for the uh, for the C zone, but you know it is what it is. But I guess this could be classified as kind of your neck target or whatever. But that's on you to decide that. Uh, so 
Sorry about the plane noise, but anyways, as far as the sea zone area, I mean, this is a big area, and it's kind of outside the ranges of just the CNS, but when you're shooting at range, hits do count, and this is a good uh, test for, you know, shooting at range, being able to actually hit in a C-zone area, uh, basically the size of my uh, silhouette, and basically keeping it nice and discriminated as much as possible is your uh, ultimate goal, but, you know, having some, you know, leniency for yourself of being able to hit and you know, a wider area is probably a good idea to kind of save yourself some stress. But as far as having a standard, you know, try to keep your, uh, try to keep everything high and tight. Uh, at least I try to keep it on this hanger area. But, you know, you can only do so much, but you got to practice. And this is a great way to practice. And you always want to, you know, be better. Uh, always strive to be better, right? So anyways, that's basically my little spiel on combat accuracy and uh, testing it and training with it using paper and steel. Because, uh, you know, combat accuracy as a term is used a lot uh, to basically excuse somebody for having poor accuracy. I, I like to keep it in a more practical sense to kind of uh, use it the way it should be, where your accuracy is good for actual combat. It's not just getting a relative hit or a graze. You're actually inflicting shots that will stop the fight. That, to me, is true combat accuracy. Not necessarily precision. Precision is like being able to shoot out an eyeball or something like that, or uh, being able to do a headshot at 50 yards. Or That's precision shooting where you have pretty much all the time in the world, and uh, you're just focusing on putting that bullet uh, wherever you can that's like bullseye shooting to me so there's a bit of a dif difference with combat accuracy from the typical definition and my definition and having a standard that you stay within a tolerance for that is a good idea but again you're always striving for more the combat accuracy is more your furthest boundary of acceptable accuracy so that's really the point of this video so anyways i apologize if this was a little bit long but i just wanted to go ahead and define that if you want a little bit um more on this i wrote an article on my blog and i'll link that down below but uh with all that said go ahead and leave a comment below and thanks a lot for watching and you guys have a good one